You or your child feel compelled to be absolutely perfect? Or do you have the need to constantly have the TV or the radio going or something to keep your mind busy? Do you have a hard time just calming down or being at ease with peace and quiet? Can your kids sit and focus and uh, project their energy towards a task, homework, play, whatever it is? Or do they constantly feel like they're distracted? What I'm describing is anxiety, but specifically I want to talk about high functioning anxiety, which involves individuals, whether it's children or adult, who are high achievers in their everyday expectations and responsibilities, despite their anxiety. So this sounds harmless, and it is. But when this anxiety becomes too much for these individuals to handle, it can have adverse responses and negatively affect their quality of life, their day-to-day -day quality of life in a very big way. And that's where we're gonna dive in. Positive characteristics of high function anxiety. Neatness, organization. These guys, whether it's school or work or home or whatever it is, they have a high level of uh, scheduling, of neatness, of clarity, of attention to detail. It's fantastic. But as we said, sometimes these individuals have a hard time dealing with the levels of anxiety slowly inching higher. So what does this lead to? We see uh, incidences of headaches, high blood pressure, right? Difficulty sleeping, difficulty resting, fatigue then sets in. Panic attacks, nervousness, stomach aches, digestive issues can even lead to tics or what we call stimming which is um, like fidget spinners and the constant need to tap their pen or tap their foot, those types of things. And even substance abuse or uh, addiction in, um, in the more severe cases. We typically find these individuals, these patients to be both wound up and worn out at the same time. And what causes that? Their sympathetic nervous system gets stuck in the on position. Okay, within our nervous system, we've got, we're designed to have a balance, right? We've got a brake pedal, we've got a gas pedal. And you and I are supposed to be able to fluctuate back and forth between gas, gas pedal and brake pedal freely, right? If something enrages us, we should be able to become you know, a Wonder Woman, Superman, right? But at the same time, then we should be able to come off of that high and be able to be nurturing and loving and, and find ourselves in those calming um, states. So what happens with these levels of anxiety is our system gets stuck in the on position a stress stuck in the on position, and then we simply can't move back down to the brake pedal, the resting, the digesting, the healing. This sympathetic dominance, that gas pedal stuck in the on position, is what allows them that drive and the ability to succeed. But then the exhaustion sets in, and that's what leads to emotional dysregulation and other struggles. The traditional approach to treating high function anxiety is similar to other approaches or other avenues uh, of treating anxiety in other forms. And that's either therapy or medication or a combination of the two. But there is hope, there's other options. A new quickly and emerging option for parents is that of neurologically focused chiropractic care. And what our goal is, is to help balance the nervous system, to take that sympathetic tone, that too much gas pedal, and start to stimulate the parasympathetics and get that part working, part, or start to provide some more brake pedal in there to balance the overall system and allow some regulation to occur. And for children and adults dealing with high functioning anxiety, neurologically focused chiropractic adjustments have been shown to help stimulate the parasympathetic response. Sometimes this is called vagal tone right? And it has been shown to not only increase um, digestion and rest, but also the immune response and then emotional regulation. So how do we care for this in the office? Well, it starts with an examination and specifically in our office, an insight nervous system scan. And what this is, is it's three tests that help us understand where the nervous system is functioning well, where it's stimulated maybe too much, there's too much tone, okay? In cases like the high function anxiety, and then where things are lagging or falling behind. All right, of the three, two that I wanna talk about today are HRV and an SEMG. SEMG is the neuromuscular tension, the signals that are coming from the body to the brain and explaining how much is happening down below. So you can see in young Avery here, too much tension. White would be normal, and she's got a heck of a lot of red and green and some blue up there that's causing that overstimulation, okay? I like to look at these scores, the total energy index. Total energy index for a young one her age is should be about 125, okay? She's at 236, almost double, okay? So when mom says like, hey doc, you know, she's having a hard time sitting, 
focusing in class. She kind of disrupts her classmates. It's like, well, no kidding. She's got all this energy coming in. It's like somebody's constantly yelling at her and, and she's got all these voices in her head and, and talking to her, right? I would be the same way. Our job is to help balance this, release this tension and allow that system to fluctuate and function like it was designed to. The other one then, not surprising, this is the HRV. Remember we talked about gas pedal versus brake pedal. Well, if we look at you know, Avery here, this is sympathetic tone, that's gas pedal, parasympathetic is brake pedal, she's stuck on the gas pedal. My job is to help relieve that, take, my take her foot off the gas a little bit and get that brake pedal coming back up here, allowing her body to function right, feel right, uh, and regulate like it's designed to. Or how about this example? Doc, I find myself tired all the time, but I also find myself stressed out all the time. So much so that I think I take it out on my kids and I take it out on my wife. Well, let's see. Doc, I find myself tired all the time, worn out, but I find myself stressed all the time, wound up, right? This is an example of a farmer that we had in the office uh, who, and farming is stressful, right? That's around the clock, nonstop, years on end, right? And all he was looking for was answers because he thought that maybe I'm just a jerk. No, you're not a jerk. Your system's just been, it's been stressed. It's been stressed and it's giving up. So we gotta allow the system to balance. And that's where neurologically based chiropractic care comes in. So this then allows us the ability to calm down, relax, control emotion, fall asleep easier so that the next morning we can wake up and feel refreshed. Because that's stuff that we want for you, me, and everyone. We do these scans, we lay out a plan, we get her system calmed back down, and then we retest. And when we retest, what we wanna see are those scores changing. We wanna see the energy index coming down. We wanna see a pattern and symmetry start to um, evolve, which means that her system is regulating and imbalanced, all right? I wanna see that HRV not only sneak back towards midline, but also if you notice in Avery's, her energy is depleted, right? So she's got too much energy, right? But overall, her body is depleted. Remember, we find these people wound up but worn out. Okay, so over time, as we decrease this, we start to see this one start to sneak back up here, right? So it's not so much that these kids have more energy, it's just easier to focus this energy. So if this is describing you or your child, your spouse, or someone that you know, give us a call. We can help.